Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. You can mm. taste it, and it has got some, uh, according to many people, healing powers. Mm. Uh, mm. It's rich with minerals. <coughs> it smells like an old egg. <laughs> <laughs> so it's and uh, the altar where where Bishop was martyred, and on the on the steps uh, there are the remains of his blood in there. Mass begins, and this is the altar where Bishop Stanislav, Stanislav was killed. Right here is where he was murdered. Saturday morning, Jindobre Ken, Jindobre Jay, enjoying Poland. God bless. We all headed back to the hotel and gave everybody a little more than two hours of free time to go out to lunch, go to the city square, get a lunch at hotel before we go to Auschwitz. Here's a group that's going back to the city square to see St. Mary's during our break for lunch. Watching a movie about Auschwitz on our way to see Auschwitz. We succeeded in giving the German nation a ruling over other nations, of destroying other nations and peoples. Such was the program inherent in the Fuhrer's Mein Kampf, though he never put it in so many words.
This is the infamous gate that says work makes you free that we're entering in now. What a euphemism. Our bite mock fry work makes you free. And once you're in, The soldier on his right is pointing with his finger. He's the doctor deciding who lives and who dies. You can see here the shadow of the finger pointing, making decisions on people's lives instantaneously. After they were unloaded from the trains, they were marched down, taken underground here to the gas chambers. That's where they were killed. And the bodies were brought up and stacked, and then they were put in the ovens to be cremated. They could kill a thousand people at a time and then take them right from the gas chambers up to the, to the crematorium. These are the original Cyclone B gas canisters, prosthetics, confiscated from the victims of the Nazis. This is just a fraction. Piles of shoes. Next we arrive at block 11, which was the prisoner block, and this is where Maximilian Kolbe lost his life by starvation and chirobolic acid. We're now going into the basement of block 11 where Maximilian Kolbe was starved to death. We're now in the basement, cell 18 is a starvation cell. Here's cell number 18, where Maximilian Colby died of starvation. This is the cell where Maximilian Colby was starved to death. He was in Auschwitz and gave his life for another. Here he steps forward take the place of another man and they put him in the starvation cell for two weeks and he survived so they gave him a shot of carbolic acid to finish him off. Here's the shrine to his heroism and John Paul II coming to venerate him and the cell. We just exited here. This was the cell block 11, cell number 18, where Maximilian Colby died. This is the firing squad. Over 5,000 people died there, execution by firing rifles.
the ovens, the train tracks that brought the people up to the ovens. In all other places where we can see now the brick chimneys, there were over 200 wooden houses. Look at the barracks. In the middle of the camp. Look at the barracks. It goes on and on. All the way down there. That way. All the way past. That was just the entrance right there. It goes on that far beyond again. To look at all the more. And, uh, this was massive. This place was soon after the liberation was plundered by the Soviet army. The local people started to do very quickly such things as well. And over a hundred barracks were dismantled on the demand of the Polish authorities and they were moved to the army. 90,000 people lived in this camp, surrounded by barbed wire fence. One, almost 100,000. There is where they came in and they were unloaded off the trains. The crematorium were down in the forest over there. Very few people realize now. Steve Ray here. We're at Auschwitz Birkenau. We just took a tour of Auschwitz. We're now in the Birkenau camp, which was much bigger. From here to the other side is six tenths of a mile both ways. Unbelievable. At one time, 90,000 people lived here under excruciatingly terrible conditions. Our group here is now seeing all of this and uh, viewing it, and our guides are telling us about it. Here's the entrance. Oh, yeah, yeah. The little train brought the people in and took them down and disembarked on off the train down that way, and uh, they were sent either to labor or to be killed and burned in the oven. So. Here we are, Auschwitz-Birkenau. If we forget our history, we're doomed to repeat it. Um, stops to get there, or you can just walk for about 20 Back minutes. Back to Krakow, almost to our hotel for the, the evening free. Our Jewish ghetto, uh, which is not, uh, right now a really nice place. You can see like the the, the Jewish heritage in here.